A very good day to you. Once again, it's just so good to be with you on Family Time with Angus. I want to speak to you today about a new song. My friend, have you got a song in your heart? You say, Angus, I'm feeling so flat. I'm feeling so down. I'm feeling so discouraged. Well, listen to this message. Okay, we've entitled it A New Song. God wants to put a new song into our hearts. Now, in order to do that, we need to wait upon the Lord. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. One of our favorite scriptures on this program, is it not? Waiting upon the Lord for a new song. Now, in order to wait upon the Lord, you need to be patient. Oh, my friend, if there's one thing that is lacking in our society today, it is the lack of patience, especially amongst young people, because by nature, young people want to do everything the same day. I know I've been there. <laughs> I'm still working through that one, and I'm definitely not a young person anymore. But patience is es essential for a child of God to have a new song in his heart. You can't just keep on going, going, going. Eventually, the battery is going to run flat. And you know what's going to happen? You're going to start becoming anxious, depressed. You're going to start becoming fearful, filled with anxiety because you're worn out. You can't keep that momentum up. You have to teach yourself patience. Now, I've just read a book by Andrew Murray called Waiting on God. And I want to tell you, it's really challenged my inner man. You see, if you're going to run a comrade's marathon, a long marathon, 90 kilometers, you cannot run that race if you have no patience. Because the experts will tell you, guaranteed, if you walk the first 10 kilometers, you'll run the last 10 kilometers. But none of us, including me, do that. We're so excited with the hype and with everybody getting ready to go and all the well wishes, we run twice as fast as we should. So what happens when we get to the last 10 kilometers? We've got no more petrol in the tank, and we end up like I did. I actually collapsed, passed out. I was taken to hospital in an ambulance because I started too quick, and I did not work with patience and see the race through. It's the patient people that get there. Now, if you want a new song in your heart today, the Lord says you must wait on Him, and you must be patient. Now, if you've got your agricultural manual with you, your Bible, go with me to the, the uh, Psalms, Psalm 40, and I'm just going to read a couple of verses. Psalm 40. This is written by David, and it was written at a time when he, when he was in his deepest, deepest depths of despair. This is, this is what he says. Verse 1 of Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined to me and heard my cry. He listened to me. He inclined to me. I waited patiently upon the Lord. My dear friend, you say patience is not one of my strong points. I understand. I'm an impulsive person by nature as well, as you well know. I want to tell you, poor people, that's right, disadvantaged people, handicapped people, orphans, Widows, they understand patience. You know why? Because they understand suffering. You go into Central Africa, I tell you what, those black people will teach you patience like you cannot believe. They will st stand on the side of the road and wait for two days for a bus to come past. And they won't move from that place. You and I, if the bus is not there within 10 minutes, we start making a plan. And that's why... We don't have a new song in our heart. The Latin word, according to Andrew Murray, for patience is suffering. Yes, patience is suffering. So when you understand how to suffer, then you become patient. You see a man in a wheelchair. You see a blind man. You see a man who can't hear properly. Tell me, what, what do you see in their lives? They've all got the same quality. What is it? They are patient people. Have you noticed that? They'll sit in that wheelchair and they'll just wait their turn. And they'll smile. 
If you'll come and say, can I help you? No, it's okay, thank you. I'm just waiting for somebody to come. A blind man, he'll stand there and he'll wait. Can I help you across the road, sir? Thank you very much. Give you his hand and you walk him across the road. You go to a, a ward where there are terminally ill people. You'll see patient people. Normally got a smile on their face. They're normally more at peace than you and I. Why? Because they understand suffering. Suffering makes you patient. Okay? Paul, the apostle, understood that. If you look at his life story before he got saved, he was a very impatient, impulsive, intolerant man. He was an angry man. His main objective was to kill Christians. And what happened? He met the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord says, you're going to see how you're going to suffer for me. Paul was stoned at least twice. When they stone you in Israel in those days, that is the death penalty. He got up from those stonings and he was found preaching in the town the next day. Can you imagine what he must have looked like? A bloody mess, probably a broken nose, closed eye, black and blue all over his body, patient, preaching the gospel with patience. Now he said in Romans chapter 5 and verses 3 and 4, I rejoice in my suffering. Folks, have you ever heard a person say that? I rejoice in my suffering. I'm happy because of my sufferings. Because suffering produces patience, patience character, and character hope. So I rejoice in my suffering. You sit in there and you say, Angus, I want God to make me patient. I'll pray for you at the end of this program. But I'll tell you what's going to happen. You're going to suffer. Because it's when you put something in the fire and it comes out, it's pure. All the dross and the rubbish is burnt off it. Some of the most impatient people I have ever met in my life are normally people who have never suffered. Okay? They have been blessed with amazing health. They come from a very wealthy background. They've never had to wait for anything. Everything is at their fingertips. Okay? They are popular. When they go into a party, into a meeting, everybody comes and greets them. Those are often, not always, but normally very impatient people. They don't tolerate um, people that make mistakes very easily. I want to ask you a question, sir. And I'm talking particularly about Southern Africa, but it could be anywhere in the world. If you are on the highway and your motor car breaks down, who are the first people to stop and help you? Now, just think about this. Is it the man in that big Rolls Royce, in that massive BMW, in that Ferrari sports car? Does he normally stop and help you? Not normally. Yes, you get exceptions, but not normally. I'll tell you who will stop. It's a guy with an old, broken down, dilapidated motor car. He'll pull over. He's probably got his chickens in the back and his wife and his kids. And he's got his spare wheel tied on the roof with some wire. <laughs> he'll stop. And he'll say, can I help you, please? Why? Because he knows what it's like. Because he breaks down on the highway regularly as well. You understand what I'm saying? Patience comes through suffering. If you're sick in your bed, who's the person that really, really sympathizes with you? I'm not talking about the super spiritual Christian who walks in and says, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I've arrived. I'm going to read you five scriptures, lays his hand, his mitt on top of your head, pours off a bottle of <laughs> healing all over you, prays the prayer of faith and says, you'll be fine, and walks out. No, 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 no. It's probably a man that will come in. You know, when I collapsed in that uh, Comrades Marathon, I was running that Comrades Marathon for a young lady who had broken her back. She had fallen off a three-story building. She was paralyzed. And God has healed her. She came up the steps of that hospital. And she walked up to my bed and she just put her arms around me and she gave me such a beautiful hug. And she said, I'm so proud of you, Um Angus. As far as I'm concerned, you finished the Comrades Marathon. By the way, I was 14 kilometers short. I'd uh, run 74 Ks. See? Now the other people came and they lectured me and they encouraged me and they joked, but she came and put her arms around me. Why? Because she understood suffering. And suffering produces patience. Now let's just read what, what a man who'd messed up big time. He had been totally, he, he had actually committed adultery. He had committed mass murder. He was a liar and his name was David and he was the apple of the Lord's eye and a man after God's own heart. You go and work out that one. <laughs> That's for another message. 
Okay, he was totally messed up. Right? He had made Bathsheba pregnant. Okay? She, she, she was carrying his child, his top general, Uriah the Hittite. He had him murdered and his whole division to try and clear the, 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 the ground. And everything was sorted out until Nathan, the prophet of the Lord, came and said, By the way, God says, He's not going to kill you, but He's going to punish you for what you've done. And He told him everything. I waited patiently for the Lord, and He inclined to me, and He heard my, not plea, cry. He heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a terrible, a horrible pit. Out of, a, out of the miry clay. And he set my feet upon a rock and he established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth. Did you hear that? I'll say it again. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. Now, there's a man who loved God so much, folks. He used to speak with God. He wrote most of the Psalms out of the book of Psalms. He used to look after his father, Jesse's sheep, on the mountains and, and sing songs to God and commune with God all day long. And he fell. He fell in a moment and he went right into that miry pit. He was in trouble. He suffered. See, But through the suffering... He became a patient man. Same thing happened to Moses. Moses was so impulsive. Just like you sitting there watching this program and like me. Moses was so angry with that slave driver in Egypt because he was beating the, the children of, of, of Israel that he killed him. He just killed him there and then. That's impatience. How many of you watching this program are battling with a, a bad temper? Well, I'm going to pray for you at the end of this program. Angus, I get so angry, man. And I just want to tear the place apart. That is unacceptable, sir. I don't care whether you're born again, spirit filled, speaking tongues, being baptized, you lose your temper, unacceptable. Because your children and your wife are suffering because of that. And your workers, your employees, because you are impatient and impulsive. That is not a godly trait at all. That's what the devil does. The devil gets you so wound up, you see, you're, on, you're running on that treadmill that you just want to explode. And people always get hurt. Today, we're going to ask God to put a new song in your heart. He's going to fill you with patience, but it's going to come through suffering. Now, the question is, see, are you prepared to go through with the remedy? A lot of men come to me, and women, please, Angus, pray for me, that God will take this temper, this angry spirit out of me. I say, yes, I'll pray. I'll pray that God will make you a patient person. Now, that might cost you something. See, Jesus says, if your eye is causing you to lust, take it out, your eye. Gouge it out so that you may go to heaven. You won't have two eyes, but you'll get to heaven. If your arm or your leg is causing you to commit sin, cut it off so that at least you can get to heaven. So if you say to me, Angus, I want this temp of mine to be dealt with once and for all. It's cost me a marriage. It's cost me my business. It's cost me so much. Maybe some of you are watching this program. You're sitting in jail. You say, my temper put me in jail. I killed a man because of what he was attempting to do to whatever. See? Now, I'm going to pray that God will give you patience. And patience will come through suffering. And I tell you something now, a patient man has got no temper. Oh, no. Because he counts the cost before he makes a decision. You know, I just wish that when I was 30 years old, I knew what I know now. And I, this is not a joke. I was one of the most impulsive people. I would do a job six times to get it right. I'd get it right in the end. And I had the strength and I had the youth on my side. It took me six times. Now I don't have that strength, you see. And I don't have that youth. And this is not a joke, sir, madam. So what I do, I sit down and I work out the job that I'm going to do. And I do it once, only once, and I do it properly. That comes through patience. I never had patience, but God has put me through a program of suffering, which has taught me patience. I'm not saying that I've arrived, but I'm a lot further down the road than I was when I was 30 years old. So the same thing happened with David. See, David was impulsive. 
Can you imagine when he killed uh, Goliath? Do you think he sat down and took his time? He went straight at him and he killed him. But you see, David's impulsiveness cost him. He saw that woman bathing in the, in the, in the, in the, in the afternoon. And straight away, he just went and he lusted after her and he slept with her and made her pregnant. Messed up everything. See, when he was older, he didn't do that. No, 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 no. See that woman down there? She's bathing. He'd look at her. That's temptation. All of us are tempted. Jesus was tempted too, by the way. That's not a sin. That's temptation. He looked one time, turned around, walked away. See, that's it. When you look a second time, that's lust. And then you're caught by the foulest snare. The devil's got you. Now, when you become patient, you see, you suss things out. That woman does not belong to me. That is somebody else's wife. I shouldn't be looking at her. I shouldn't even be anywhere near her. I'm going. See? Listen to what he says here. He says that the Lord has put a new song in his mouth because the Lord redeemed him. Now, this is what Andrew Murray says. He says, true patience, true patience is so foreign to our carnal nature. It's not a natural thing to be patient. No. It's go in there and take it. It's mine. I deserve it. I'm taking it. I'm going to be first in. I'm going to get the main help in. I'm not going to be left out of that tube train when the, gate, the doors close. I'm going to push my way in. See? That's an impulsive person. A patient person will take a step back. I'll wait for the next train. And I tell you what, that's what makes people sit up and notice you. It's not babbling on. It's not preaching. It's when they see those fruits of the Spirit. Patience, long-suffering, loving kindness, eh? selflessness. Okay? But patience is essential to our faith. Without patience, your faith is not going to last. Remember, I've just told you, patience is the Latin word. The Latin word for patience is suffering. So when we try to resist authority or power put in place over us, then we resort to patient endurance. Okay, I'm going to say that again, because maybe some of us didn't get that for the farmers. <laughs> okay? When we try to resist authority or power put in place over us, then we resort to patience and endurance. Okay? So when somebody is being put in authority, so you've become a Christian, and the Lord says to you, the Lord says to you, I do not want you to be impulsive anymore. You say, well, how am, I going to, how am I going to achieve this? By patience and by patient endurance. So waiting on the Lord, getting up in the morning, having your quiet time. You know, I met with a couple here yesterday and the lady's gone through some, some depression. And I just asked her, just very, very gently, I said, how's your quiet time in the morning? No, no, well, I read my Bible. I said, yeah, but do you read it systematically? How much time do you spend with the Lord? See, folks, that requires patience. You get up in the morning, oh, I'm going to be late for work today. So I'm just going to have my quiet time, but I'm making the breakfast for the kids. And I'm getting my husband ready for work. And I've got my Bible on the kitchen table and I'm reading it. Madam, forget it. It's actually an insult to God. Because you wouldn't do that to anybody else. You wouldn't do that if they wanted to come and meet you. You need to get up in the morning. That takes patience. You need to wait on the Lord. The Lord doesn't just speak to you. Sometimes you have to get your heart in order. He says, I'm not going to talk to you because you're not listening to me. Well, you've got to spend a half an hour doing what? Just meditating. Listening to some Christian music. Just keeping your eyes closed and just thinking about the Lord. Getting rid of any sin in your life. Confessing your sins. Angus, I don't have that time. Madam, you can't afford not to do that. That's why you're battling with depression. That's why you're on those tranquilizers. Because you're at your your wit's end. I'm telling you how to do it, through patience. That's how, that's how Paul did it. Okay, so that's how we do it. Waiting on God. That's what patience is. It's our highest, highest responsibility. And it's that waiting on God that gives us extreme joy eventually. I love going to my quiet time room. It's my favorite place, folks, on this farm. It's my quiet time room. It's so exciting. I don't know what God's going to say to me next. 
It brings us perfect rest, peace, in the assurance that God is carrying on His work. That's right. Lord, you know something? You are in charge of this universe. It doesn't matter what they say about the economic situation is coming apart at the seams. The whole of Europe and America is just collapsing. There's war in the Middle East. There's disease and sickness in Africa. There doesn't look like there's any hope. Jesus says, be still and know that I am God. See, and if Christ is for you, there's no man will stand against you. But in order to hear that from God, you need patience. Even as I'm talking to you now, some of you are saying, hurry up, Angus, I've got to go to work. Folks, you're not going to listen to this message. You're not even going to enjoy it. In fact, maybe you're resenting me for it. But I'm telling you the truth in love. The only way you're going to get a new song in your heart is when you start to be patiently waiting upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? I just want to finish up with this because I want to pray with you. True patience is the losing of our self-will in His perfect will. See? Lord, I'm dying so that you can live. My will, no longer Lord, but your will be done. Okay? So even as David waited upon the Lord, Jesus, okay? He brought him out of that miry pit and he put a new song in his heart. My dear friend, let us pray. Father, this is a difficult subject for me to speak about because I'm the worst culprit. I'm probably the most impulsive son that you've got. But I thank you, like Paul said, for my suffering. Because my suffering in this life has brought me patience. And I'm not so quick to throw stones. I'm not so quick to judge people. I'm not so quick just to do things and say yes. I'm now starting to say, can I come back to you? I want to pray about it a bit more. I'm sorry I can't make it now because I'm already double booked. And I'm not offending as many people as maybe I, I did once before. And most of all, Lord, you have put a new song in my heart. And I'm feeling stronger physically, mentally and spiritually than I've ever felt before. I pray the same prayer for my dear friend watching this program. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, my friends, there you have it. Patience. How do we get patience? By endurance. By, suffer, by being prepared to suffer if necessary. But let's do it. And God will give us a new song. Until next time, goodbye. Thank you for watching today's episode of Family Time with Angus Buckin. For more information about other material or events, please visit angusbuckin.com. Did you know you can connect with Angus on Facebook and receive regular encouragements and updates? Or you can follow Angus on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash angusbuckin.com.